James Version, verse number 7. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up, O ye gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes today, and I'm going to tie this all in, I promise. You have the keys, so use them. You have the keys, so use them. The Lord bless you as you're seated here today. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. Amen. Because we have turned... Because... He said... To live, you need to extend his stay, and he called his pastor, at Pastor James, back home, and Pastor James. Came to go ahead and extend the ticket. He left me. You get getting ready to go back, and the team told us need you to get stuck here in the United States and not be able to get home. You need to come on back with us when our ticket says that we need to go back and I know this is a sign from God and you just need to get on the plane and go on back and you can plan to come next year and you can plan to stay longer when you come the next time. And, and Gavin said, he said, no, but I know that I heard from God and that I'm supposed to stay and that I'm supposed to be here. And, and I, I have to, I have to, I have to walk out my faith. And so he began to make contacts and he began to make calls. And on the last day before he was to have to report, they told him when he called the airline, they said, we, we no longer even see your ticket in the system. That means something has happened to your ticket in the system and so the airline told him what we suggest you do is you better show up at the airport tomorrow when you are ready to leave when you're supposed to leave because if you don't show up here we don't have a ticket in the system for you and you're going to be stranded here in the united states he hung the phone up he he waited a bit he called back and when he called back he he asked again about (laughs) extending his ticket and the lady on the other end of the line said i don't know what's going on here but all of a sudden your ticket has popped back up and she said and now then i can tell you that the cost yes it's showing me a cost to extend your ticket and she said the cost now to extend your ticket is 170 dollars Now listen, I don't think some of you kept up with my story because it started out at 185, went to 1700, and then and then ended up at 170. He ended up saving 15 dollars and and being able to extend himself. And he said, Pastor, the only way that I could do that, he said, I had to have faith that what God spoke to me was what I was supposed to be doing. He said, because in my country, he said, every month I have to depend on God for my rent. I have to depend on God for our food in our country. And he said, what I've learned is that people here they have a Abilities to make things happen in themselves and they don't really know how to trust God hello somebody and so because the depth of our experience here in many of our churches and in many of our own personal lives because the depth of our spiritual experience is only ankle deep people's lives in our communities continue to be pillaged and plundered by an enemy who has already defeated an enemy who has no real power to stop the promises of God for their life because while he knows he's defeated we don't know that he's defeated and we continue to allow him to pillage and plunder our lives That's why you're not going to hear me do a lot of talking and preaching entire messages here at this church on the devil. I'm not going to waste my time on a series on the devil. Hello, somebody. And you say, well, why why not, Larry? Don't you believe there's an enemy? Yes, I believe there's a real enemy. But if the truth be told, he has very little to say about your future other than what you and I arm him with and give him permission to talk about. And I refuse to give the, the enemy a platform in my life that he has no right to. You still with me? And, and listen, God and the devil are not in a battle for my soul. I know I'm about to shake some of your theology here today. So just hang on with me. But God and the devil are not in a battle for my soul. That war is over. And God is the victor. 
I said that war is over and God is the victor. God, according to the word of God, reconciled the world to himself through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He reconciled the world to himself through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He became friends with you. Now he wants you to become friends with him by accepting what he did for you that you couldn't do for yourself. He has already made reconciliation. All you have to do is accept it. That battle is over. So hear me this morning. The enemy is defeated. Everybody say defeated. Defeated. And whatever beliefs you have about the end times, whatever beliefs you have about eschatology and and what's going to happen at the end of time, uh, no no matter what so-called prophecy preachers have told you, the devil is not going to make a second half comeback. It's over. He lost. That means according to the new covenant that went into effect went into effect with the death of Jesus because how many of you know this the new covenant did not start until Jesus died because in order for a will to be effective someone has to die. Y'all not hearing me today. But the new covenant didn't go into effect until the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. But when the new covenant went into effect, what that means is God is not waiting on anything else to happen. Jesus is Lord. Come on, present tense. He's not going to be Lord. He is Lord, somebody. This preached a lot better at my house. That means, that means that God doesn't have to do one more thing for you to receive what He's promised to you. Listen, I, I, I've really had over the past couple of years to watch my language, and I'm not talking about cursing, but just watch the way that I speak. Because I began to realize things that I speak uh, and, and the way that I speak and the way that I talk and how I've spoken in the past give away the belief of my heart. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you really believe is what you will articulate. And when we start saying things like this, when we, when we, get, when we start uh, uh, believing in our spirit life, and we start saying things like, God is about to do this, and God's getting ready to do this. Could I, could I just tell you, I've had to really watch my terminology, because God is eternal. And in God's administration, everything is already done. He's not getting ready to do anything. He's not about to do anything. He has already done everything in the eternal that he is going to do it's already accessible to you but if you don't know how to access it then it will never benefit you you have to know how to access what's been done for you am i helping anybody Mm -hmm. watch this this is really going to mess with some of you Uh, you're already healed You're already blessed. Man, I'm telling you, if I could ever get this into us, it would transform our church. Because we wouldn't spend our time at prayer meetings. God, I, Father, I pray that you bless them. We would stop wasting prayers on things that are already accomplished. What we would start praying is, Father, I pray that their eyes would be open, that they could begin to walk into the blessing that you have already established in their life. If we would go into hospital rooms and begin to pray for people, not that they be healed, but that healing that has already taken place would begin to manifest in their lives and in their bodies. Come on. If we would start uh, praying from a place of access and authority, we would begin to understand that I'm already healed. I'm already blessed. I already have a breakthrough. But accessing what I have uh, ability to access is the key to me having victory in my life. See, the reason that so many uh, uh, churches and people don't know that is because in our churches, I'm going to make people mad. But in many of our churches, we do a lot of preaching about Jesus, but not much preaching about what Jesus preached. Thank you. We... (laughs) 
We do a lot of preaching about Jesus. We talk a lot about Jesus. But we don't actually do a lot of preaching about what Jesus preached about. I know this is going to surprise some of you, may even shock you, or maybe even offend somebody, but Jesus rarely preached salvation. Jesus did not spend 52 weeks of the year, you need to come down and confess and get saved. He, he didn't spend all his time preaching about salvation. In fact, Jesus did not, according to John 8, 38 and 42, John 12, 49, 50, John 14, 24, Jesus did not speak his own words, but the words that the Father gave him to speak. Jesus' message was not primarily about himself, but his message was the good news that the Father had ordained him to announce on the earth. While Jesus Christ is and was categorically the most important individual to ever walk the earth, the Bible clearly shows you that the gospel that Jesus brought was not simply about himself. Larry, I, man, now you're getting close to sacrilege. Okay, good. I, 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 I didn't put all these up there because i got to hurry and you don't have time. Just mark it down. If you can take notes real quick, just take them down and then, and then go home and read them for yourself. I'll prove it to you from the Word of God that Jesus didn't do a lot of preaching about himself or salvation. Matthew chapter 4, 23. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing sickness and every disease among the people. Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. Jesus said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities, because for this purpose I have been sent Luke chapter 8 and verse 1 now it came to pass afterward that Jesus went through every city and village preaching and bringing the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God Luke chapter 16 verses 16 and 17 the law and the prophets were until John and since that time the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail Matthew chapter 20 24 and 14 and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come don't misunderstand me this morning according to Acts chapter 4 verse 10 through 12 be it known unto you and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you whole this is the stone that was set at naught of you builders which has become the head of the corner neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved Jesus himself said I am the door and by me if men enter in they shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture and while salvation is key there's more to it than just you getting a ticket to heaven I know you didn't see it, but I just did a (laughs) backflip. What I just did was the equivalent of a backflip. You can tell by the way I'm breathing. (laughs) Jesus didn't spend a lot of time preaching about himself. Now, you can't get saved any other way than through Jesus. And Jesus acknowledged that I'm the door. But how many of you understand this? If there's a door, then there has to be a room behind the door. (laughs) Hello? Oh, Jesus, help me. I need some help. Where's my helpers? Where's my helpers? Why do all my helpers always disappear? Corey, uh, I need your help. Go out there and get my door. Hurry, man. I don't have all day. There's a second service coming in here. A better pastor would have been better prepared. Hallelujah. 
How many of you understand that a door is an access point? <laughs> a door is a gateway. Come on. A, 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 a door is a point from which you pass from one thing into another. Hello, 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 hello. It's on wheels. Just bring it in here. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch that one. I want to show you something. Na 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 takes two yahoos. Come on. Turn it sideways and let's go, brothers. Come on, man. Let's do this. Hallelujah. Come on, turn it this way. Come on, come on, turn it this way. Turn it this way. Turn it this way. Come on, come on, turn it back the other way. Turn it back the other way. Turn it back the other way. Turn it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay close. Stay close. Stay close because I'm going to need you in a minute. How many of you understand that a door is an access point? Come on, a door is an access point. And Jesus said, I am the door. But here's what a lot of people do a lot of people get in the door, and that's all they want to do is stay in the door. And they want to shout about the door. And they want to dance about the door. And they want to be grateful about the door. And I want to tell you, I am thankful for the door who is Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ did not become a door so that I could stand in the door and block access. Jesus Christ became a door so that I could step from death to life. So that I could step from not enough to more than enough. Man, I'm preaching real good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm preaching real good. He, he, listen, he came so that I could step from sickness to hell. There's a door that you can walk through. Somebody needs to get that door out from in front of me. Just push it over there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many Aggies does it take to move a door? Listen, listen, listen. Let's go. Leave it right there. Leave it right there. Leave it right there. Because I'm on. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Woo, man. One thank you, guys. I'm just messing with y'all. Love y'all. Hallelujah. Listen, you have wives to treat you tender. That's not why I'm here. Hallelujah. You listen. Listen, one thing you've got to understand is if there is a door, then there's something behind the door. And contrary to popular church teaching, watch this. I'm not going to be able to finish today. But contrary to popular church teaching, you don't have to physically die. To get on the other side of the door. See, what we have preached in churches for years is that what's on the other side of the door is heaven. We even sing songs about it. Beyond the open door. Hello? Because on the other side of the door, woo, when we get on the other side of the door... When we get on the other side, ooh, think about this. Think about this. Ooh, man, I can't wait to get on the other side of the door. Because when I get on the other side of the door, he's going to wipe all tears from my eyes. When I get on the other side of the door, there'll be no sorrow. There'll be no sickness. There'll be no more pain. When I get on the other side of the door, all my needs are going to be met. And we're like, preachers are like, uh, uh, we're like circus acts that are dangling carrots and sticks out in front of people. Just a little further, just a little further, just a little further, just a little further. You can't have it until you get on the other side of the door you can't have it till you get on the other side of the door but how many of you understand you don't have to die to get on the other side of the door because Jesus died so that you could have access to what's on this side of the door I, I want to preach here today but if Jesus can wipe away your tears then he can do it now if Jesus has the power to heal your body, he can heal you right now. If Jesus can put your family together, he can do it in the here and now. 
You don't have to die to access the promises. Man. Wow. If he's able to drive depression out of your life, then he's able right now. If he's able to heal your body from sickness and disease, then that power is available right now. If he really is a chain-breaking savior, then that is right now. I want to tell, oh man. I want to tell those of you, I want to tell all my friends battling with addiction. You don't have to die to get free. You don't even have to complete a year-long program to get free. Because if he's got enough at the end of a year, he's got enough right here in the right now. You just have to learn how to access what you have availability of. Jesus said, man, I got to go. Jesus, woo -hoo. Heaven is available to me right now. And if it wasn't true, Larry, I don't, I don't really believe what you're saying. That's your, see, that's, that's the issue. Because it's really not me, it's Jesus. If, if heaven is not available now, then why would, why would Jesus instruct his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Carrots and sticks. I'm going to dangle this out in front of you. Pam, I'm going to dangle it out there. I mean, it's a good promise. It's a good promise, but you can't have it till you die. Uh-uh-uh. Nope. Uh, uh. No. Getting too close. Getting too close. That's not how God operates. Why would he tell you to pray for something you can't have ability to have? That's why, listen to, listen to me, that's why the whole message of position in Christ is so vital for you to grasp. Because Paul declared, when Jesus ascended, those who believe ascended with him. And now we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And if I am seated in Christ Jesus, then I am far above all principalities and powers of this world and the world to come. And I'm not trying to get anything. I already have it. I just have to learn how to access it. Gavin is, y'all can tell he's way more fit than I am. He went with me to workout Thursday night to my workout. He just laughed. <laughs> it's terrible, Mark. We haven't done ab work in a while. So my trainer thought it would be fun to do ab work. Well, because we, listen, I know this is live, and Randy, if you're listening, man, I repent and apologize. <laughs> but because we haven't been doing ab work, I've been kind of eating some things I shouldn't. <laughs> I think he noticed. <laughs> he said, we're going to do abs today. And he said, just to, just to make it more fun, he had my son-in-law lay down here. With, like when he comes up, he's facing that way. He had me lay down here. When I come up, I'm that, facing that way, and we're at each other, and he made us scoot apart. And then he handed us a weighted medicine ball. I'm telling you, the brother's cruel. <laughs> And he said, every time you come up, you come up, that ball behind your head, you go down, and you come up with the ball. And when you come up, you throw it to your partner. You have to understand, my son-in-law. I was nervous that, like, we weren't going to come up together. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Listen, I would demonstrate for you right now, but I'm not. Hallelujah. <laughs> because Eric, Eric is 25. You know, he served in the Marine Corps. I mean, he's not like boot camp shape, but I mean, he's in better shape than me. And, and like, he's over there doing those setups, no problem. And here's, like, when he has the ball, here's what I'm doing. <laughs> I have to do the swim move to get myself up. And I'm afraid, like, when I'm coming up, he's going to be ready to throw and my hands aren't going to be ready and... But I made it through, and he, he made us do that for, I don't, he just kept standing there. And I tell him, I, I said, Randy, my, my abs are cramping, man. I can't breathe. I'm cramping. I'm cramping. He said, getting stronger. <laughs> and and as, as I come up, he, we're doing all of that, and we finally got finished, and I for the past two days, man, I've got this guest in my house from Uganda. And I'm thinking, man, he's going to be sympathetic. <laughs> and I said, Gavin, my, my, my middle section hurts, man. And he said, what? He said, you mean you hurt? You have pain from that little exercise? <sighs> He said, I know how to fix it. I said, finally somebody that can fix it. He said, do more. <laughs> Come on, somebody help me right now. Hallelujah. See, here's the deal. Watch this. I could be doing more than I'm doing. Because Randy gave me this little credit card looking thing. That gives me 24 hour access to my gym. But let me just explain something to you. If it's not Tuesday or Thursday, I don't even go to that side of town. Because I'm afraid my car will go in that direction. And you know what? I could be, yeah, man, thank God I've lost. 50 pounds, 60 pounds, whatever it is. And, and I know I put on about seven since I lost all that, but I'm, I'm working on it, Randy. <laughs> but here's the deal. I could be way more fit than I am because I have access. Y'all not hearing me today. See, I'm in position to be able to go in and access whatever I want to access any time of the day or night. Mm. But I, I choose not to. I got to hurry. See, watch this. That's why, let me hurry. That's why if, if, if you're someone who's programmed for struggle and fighting, the message of it is finished frustrates you. Because you're always trying to be saved rather than resting in the power of salvation. <laughs> See, salvation and coming to Jesus is the easy part of the journey. Larry, you are, you are like in dangerous territory today. No, no, no. Salvation is easy. What are you saying, Larry? Salvation is easy. How is salvation easy? Do you believe in the Lord with all your heart? Then if you believe in the Lord with all your heart, then you confess that with your mouth and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we muck it up and try to make it complicated. It's not com Salvation is easy. Getting to Jesus is the easy part. Learning how to walk in what you have access to is the difficult part. And you have to be, see, the kingdom of God is hidden in mysteries. And if you aren't willing to allow God to teach you and lead you into the deep things of the kingdom, you're always going to splash around in the shallow waters of salvation. And yet you were given keys to be used for more than that. I can continue on the rest of my life working out twice a week, 30 to 45 minutes a week. And be thankful for the results I have. Or, because I'm in position and have access, I can apply myself 
Y'all not hearing me today. Watch this. Jesus said, I'm, I'm trying to hurry to a close. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 20, Jesus asked his disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ. Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this. Or Simon, flesh and blood hadn't revealed this to you, but the Spirit of God has revealed it to you. And upon this revelation, what revelation? The revelation of who I am. I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hello? And the gates of hell, so the schemes, the plans shall not prevail against the kingdom. And then he goes on and he said, and I give you the keys. It's right there, you can read it. And I give you the keys to the kingdom, right? I give you the keys to the kingdom. In other words, for Peter and for all of us, Jesus was saying, revelation is what I'm going to use to build on and with revelation comes access. Peter had a revelation. You are the Christ. And because Peter had a revelation of who Jesus was, Jesus turned around and gave him keys. Because with revelation comes access. Am I making any sense? With revelation comes access. But watch this. (laughs) What, What you have to understand is when you learn how to access heaven, what you've done is when, like, when you get the revelation, ooh, man, I need to get this into you. When you, when you can get some revelation, and with revelation brings access, what you have done is you have stepped into an invisible realm of the Spirit where decisions are made. Okay, Larry, well, why do I need access to an invisible realm of the Spirit? Well, how about this? Because what I cannot see is more powerful than what I can see. Hello? Hello? What I cannot see is more powerful than what I can see. Larry, you are making no sense today. How many of you understand that before this chair ever became an actual chair, it existed in somebody's mind? Y'all not, y'all not understand one. Before you were able to sit in it, somebody had to see it. In an invisible realm. And because somebody was willing to think in an invisible realm that nobody else could see, you and I are comfortable in here today. Because before this existed in the natural realm, it it existed in the mind of somebody. Larry, I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Listen to me. You have access to the room. Listen, through the Spirit of God, you have access to the room where decisions are made. And anything you see existed in the mind and thoughts of somebody before it came into existence in the realm of reality. So what are you saying, Larry? I'm saying this, that you have to see your breakthrough before you live your breakthrough. You have to see your healing before you live your healing. You have to see your family saved before they're sitting next to you here on a Sunday morning. And the only way to do that is to get into the realm where all those things already exist and are available. And that's the realm of the Spirit. You can't access those things with natural ideas and thoughts. So Larry, what about this? How do I... I can't be in. Why do I always run out of time? I didn't intend for this to be a series, but it's probably going to have to be now. But if you don't know how to access that realm, you're always going to be looking. (laughs) If you don't know how to access the realm of the Spirit... You will always view the door as a way out of here instead of way in here. You're always going to be looking for a way out rather than a way in. Watch this. Psalm 103 and 7. It says that God made his ways known to Moses, but he made his acts known to the children of Israel. How many of you understand that the people of Israel saw what God did? They saw it. But Moses got to participate. (laughs) 
frustrates the do why did he out of me when y'all don't get it. The people saw it. Moses got to participate in it. The people saw the waters part. It was Moses' hand on the rod that stretched out. And... Why? Because Moses had access. Come on, somebody. Moses had access. Moses had access. Here's What are you saying to me, Larry? I'm saying that I don't want to just bump into miracles every now and then when I'm desperate. I want to have the kind of relationship with God that I get put in the room where decisions are made for my life. But if there is a room, there has to be a door. And that brings me to my text, and I'm closing right now. David said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. How many understand that gates and doors are access points that allow access to another dimension or another space? Many theologians suggest that the particular psalm that I've read for our reading this morning Was a psalm written by David and his army When they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel After it had been captured by the Philistine So David is on his way home to Jerusalem A city that is surrounded by a wall Which has multiple gates Watch this Isaiah chapter 60 verse 8 Thank you Leland Isaiah 60 verse 8 says That violence shall no longer be heard in your land Neither wasting nor destruction within your borders But you shall call your walls salvation and your gates shall be called praise y'all not hearing me today gates are access points gates gates are entryways Isaiah said your wall shall be called salvation but your gates shall be called praise so it seems to me this morning that the only way to get things in or out of the walls of salvation is through the gate of praise Salvation is what secures me. Praise is what gives me access. Y'all not hearing me. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. So David is coming home. And the gates of Jerusalem are closed up. And as they get closer to the gates of Jerusalem, carrying the ark of the presence of God, somebody begins to cry out in David's camp, Open up the gate! Can't depend on nobody. <laughs> come here, Corey. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, hurry, 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 hurry. We're running into, we're running into 11 o'clock. Get on that side. Here I am. Here I am coming down. I'm David. I'm carrying the ark. That's Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is shut up. And I'm coming down the road. And as I get closer to the gate, I shout, Hey, open up the gate! And the person on the other side says, Who is it? Come on, are you with me? I'm in your Bible right now. Uh, the person on the other side shouted back, Who's all? Who is it? And David's army shouted, It is the King of Glory! And the people on the other side of the door said, Who is the King of Glory? And David said, He is the Lord, God, mighty in battle, and the Lord strong in victory. So swing wide gates and lift up your head, O ye doors, and the King of Glory will come in. I'm here to tell somebody this morning I came to make a proclamation that the King of Glory is telling somebody in here, swing wide the gates of praise and I will come in. Make that thing sound like a Hammond B3. Are y'all ready? I'm done. Psalm 100. Shout in the NIV. It says this. This translation. I know that one says make a joyful shout. But in the NIV. It says shout for joy to the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord. It doesn't say shout when something good has happened to you. It doesn't say shout when you feel good on a Sunday morning. 
It doesn't say shout when everything's lined up in your bank account. Yeah. It doesn't say yeah. shout when you got the promotion on the yeah. job. In fact, it doesn't take your circumstance or your condition into the equation. What it tells you is uh, that if you don't have joy, shout for joy. Right. Right. So you begin to shout for joy. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. I begin to raise my hands. I begin to clap my hands. I begin to shout for joy. I know that some of you don't believe this stuff, but the Psalms were used in the New Testament too because Ephesians said, making melody in your heart, singing psalms and hymns unto the Lord. And David said, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people. Come on, somebody. you got to know that praise is the way that you get it. You have the key, but you have to learn to use it. Amen. Come on, stand with me. I've got to finish. Watch this. I, I like this. Am I, are you okay? Watch this. Go ahead and stand over there. Watch this. The message version of Psalm 100 and verse 4. Ooh, hallelujah. Psalm 100 and verse 4 in the message version. How do you get in the door? That's not what it said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Jesus said knock and... I know that's not what David said, though, that's, and that's not where I'm at today. And, and Psalm 104, uh, oh. wrong arm. Yeah. Uh, what, so, how do I get into it? It's right there on your screen. Thank you, smart sound people. It said if you want to get through the door, you enter with the password. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you gets me in. Thank you gets me in. We're going to work on this for the second service. Thank you gets me in. Thank you, is, thank you is the password that gets me in. And when I get in, I am in the kingdom. And the word kingdom means jurisdiction. So when I get in the jurisdiction of the king, I have access to everything in the king's jurisdiction. Oh, oh clap your hands, all you people. Come on, play me something. I'm good. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. If you believe it. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He's a great king over all the earth. Watch this. He will subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Watch, I like this. And if I clap my hands, this is Psalm 47. If I clap my hands, he chooses my inheritance. to me today. Man, I gotta quit. He chooses my inheritance. And there's a difference in a harvest and an inheritance. A harvest is what you had to work for. An inheritance is given to you because of whose you are. And he said, if you'll clap your hand, I will choose your inheritance. I wonder as they sing this morning, does anybody got a thank you? Do you have a thank you? Can you open the gate with praise today? Can you open the gate with praise today? Yeah. If you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you, you can, can feel it, somebody testify. You got pain. Yeah. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. He's a chain 
breaker. Well, if you got pain, if you believe it's it, a pain take. you receive yeah. it. If you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. You got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. All right. So here's what they're going to do, and I'm done. They're going to play that part. If you believe it, if you receive it, you can see it. Hold on, hold on. And here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you 30 seconds today because maybe you need access. Larry, you're crazy. And there's people in here that weren't raised like you were raised. You don't have to be raised like I was raised. If somebody gave you a million dollars, you wouldn't have to be raised like I was raised. But maybe you need access today. So Chaz, I want you to sing it. If you need to lift your hands, I want you to lift them. If you need to clap your hands, I want you to clap them. If you need to say thank you, I want you to say thank you. But some way, somehow, Open the gate wide. You receive Open the gate wide. Open the gate wide. Testify, Here he comes. Testify. Here comes the key. If you believe Here comes the key. If you Here comes the key. It. Here comes you the key. It. Here Somebody comes the testify. key. You got pain. Oh, he's a pain taker. Yeah. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. Shaking Savior, you got chain. He's a chain breaker. And if you got pain, well, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking Savior, you got chains. He's a chain breaker. Now, Father. I ask you to I pronounce blessing over every life right now. Hallelujah. I pronounce blessing over every life right now. Lord, I pronounce what is already accessible and available right now. For every person in here that's walking in sickness, let healing be manifested this week in their body. For every person that's walking in weakness, let strength come this week in the name of Jesus. For every person that's walking in familial dysfunction, let let what has already been secured by what you have already accomplished at Calvary be accomplished this week in their life. Let it come into manifestation in their life this week. Lord, for every person struggling financially, allow them to walk into the blessing that has already been secured and paid for on their behalf. And Lord, for every person here who doesn't know you through the power of the forgiveness of sin, I pray right now that salvation mercy would saturate this house in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands and give Him praise. Come on, Chaz, take us out of here today.